In fact, Calvin says, Mozart became Mozart by working furiously hard. Why do you need persistence? Because there's no such thing of having this uh, divine magic wand waved over you and some talent uh, 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 poured out into you fully developed. You have to persist because that's not the way God works in your life. He works in your life through daily hard work, thoughtfulness, awareness, and persistence. He doesn't wave a magic wand over you and make everything right. Some of you haven't worked hard since somebody threatened to fire you unless you did. And that hasn't happened for years, and so you, you, you haven't given your best self to anything in years. And life gets insipid. What does persistence mean then? Our English word persistence comes from a Latin word, and the per part of it, the per part of it comes right out of the Latin. The assistance comes from the Latin verb uh, stare, and it means to stand. So uh, uh, to per, per means, the per part of it means to uh, stand before or stand uh, upon. Uh, So this is an excellent translation of the Greek word that means to remain upon. Persistence means you've made up your mind that this is what is best and this is what you're going to do, and you stand in that uh, decision day after day after day after day. So here's what persistence, persistence is not a decision, it's a lifestyle. Persistence isn't something you decide to do every day, persistence is who you've predetermined that you are. Persistence is a view of the end from the beginning. Persistence says, someday I'm going to be able to be this person And you view that at the beginning, and you say, I'm going to persist and do whatever I have to do to close the gap from this to where I am. Persistence is a commitment to daily effort. Persistence is a no-excuse approach to life. I was a high school teacher for a while. Teachers, the the excuses get old after two years. If you've taught two years, you've heard every excuse any student can come up with. Fact is, I told students, look, create a new excuse. I'll give you some points for ones I've never heard before. (laughs) I'll give you some points for the creativity to come up with some sorry excuse that I haven't heard before. Persistence is a no-excuse approach to life. You just simply say, from now on, I don't accept any excuses out of myself. Most of you don't know Chester Carlson. He came up with an invention in 1948. I mean, the 1940s. He knew this invention had potential, and he, he went to 43 companies trying to get them to see the value of this invention. 43 companies told him he was an idiot. His invention was the copy machine that's in every stinking office in America. You know why there's a copy machine in your office? Because um, Chester persisted. I think it paid off, don't you? Persistence is a self-discipline. Listen, persistence is not something that somebody else does for you. 
No one else can persist, persist for you. Nobody else can do my workout. I have to do it myself. Fact is, if I could pay somebody to do it, I would. But it doesn't work that way. Persistence is ridiculously hard work. You know why we don't persist? It's hard work. I probably wouldn't be able to read today if it were for, if I hadn't, if it was only the little um, uh, Dick and Jane books. Do you remember these little hideous readers in the 50s? Um, Jane sees Spot. Spot runs. Dick and Jane walk. Yeah, I'm motivated. I'm really into that. I think you've heard my poem before. I could not read. I did not care. My parents and teachers were driven to despair. But the cat in the hat changed that. <laughs> Dr. Seuss was rejected by 29 publishers before somebody finally published his first book. I learned to read because I saw that picture of the cat in the hat and I wanted to read that book. Do you hear that? 29 people said to Theodore Geisel, you're an idiot. Your cartoons aren't that good, and your books are too rhymy. Well, we should all be such an idiot. Geisel's kids, grandkids, great-grandkids will be wealthier than all of us put together. Finally, persistence is the vital quality for talent development. There is no talent development without persistence. Do you hear that? You can tell yourself anything you want. You can come up with any imagination you want to come up with. But the bottom line is there is no fully developed personhood. There is no fully developed talent without a day after day after month after month after year after year persistence you know it don't come easy. Persistence is the core of develop, uh, talent development. In fact, the people who have studied this say it takes about 10,000 hours of persistence to be at the top level of any talent you want to be. Now, don't tell me I don't have 10,000 hours left. Uh, because you can't be your very best self doesn't mean you can't be a whole lot better than you are right now. You hear that? None of us know if we have 10,000 hours left. Nobody in this room knows if they have 10,000 hours left in their life. I can tell you this, whether I have 10,000 hours left or not, I'm going to use hours to get better. When I die, I want to die the best self Christ created me to be. I don't want to show up in heaven and say, hey, I couldn't be Billy Graham, so I just <clears throat> said, I guess I'm good enough. Tomorrow's the Super Bowl, and the Super Bowl will always be telling stories about great players, the greatest players who ever lived. Um, perhaps, uh, uh, and some people argue on these uh, lists of the greatest 100, uh, perhaps the greatest player who ever lived was Jerry Rice. Um, if for no other reason he played a position that you get killed playing, and he played it until he was 42 years old. I'm not impressed that Favre is 40. Jerry Rice was fo uh, 42. He played 303 career games in the NFL. Most people who make it to the NFL play three seasons. Set all kinds of records. In fact, Jerry Rice became the model of what you ought to do on the offseason. People paid Jerry Rice to let them work out with him. 
Um, Jerry Rice's trainers wouldn't publish what Rice did, not because they didn't want people to know, but because if you weren't as in good a shape as he is, you could hurt yourself doing it. When everybody else call, said they were on vacation, Jerry Rice worked out six days a week the whole off season. And he had a specific workout schedule for the morning and a specific workout schedule for the evening. Not only did he work out, he practiced the precise skills he needed as a receiver. He just didn't practice in general. Um, he had to uh, make moves to, get, to uh, get himself open. He practiced those moves over and over and over and over. There's no such thing as somebody who's just born wonderful. He'll go into the Football Hall of Fame as one of the best, but he'll go in because he persisted year after year after year after year. And when other guys were laying on the couch eating Cheetos and watching Oprah Winfrey, he was out there busting himself. 